jar of raw beef. Whenever I go to work or volunteer and I'm eating my lunch, I usually just eat it by myself. More people in my real life are starting to figure out that I eat raw meat. And when they actually see me eating raw meat, a reaction I hear a lot is like, oh wow, you're, you're actually doing this, like this is for real. As if people think I'm faking this. <laughs> this is, I'm not faking this. This is how I truly eat and this is how I've been eating in secret. And I think like people in my real life wish I was acting like this was like for fun or something, but I'm completely serious. This is actually how I eat. There was a period of time where I went for many months, eat normally in front of people, and then I would go home and then eat raw meat in secret. And so I'm grateful I'm coming closer to a point in my life where I'm starting to feel more comfortable eating it in front of people, in front of people I know. I still feel weird about eating it at work, like during my lunch break. That's why I go off by myself. And when I'm volunteering too, well, when I'm volunteering, where we volunteer, it's like absolutely freezing. Like I'm definitely gonna go outside to eat it no matter what. So yeah, one of the challenges on this raw primal journey is the social aspect, eating like this in front of people in real life. But I think solitude is pretty nice. I do enjoy having a mindful experience with my food, even if it means eating alone. However, I do hope that one day I can comfortably just eat like this in front of people, especially like at work or when I volunteer and that I don't feel nervous to do so. I'm glad that I'm no longer going to pretend to eat normally to fit in or just like out of fear. And now I'm becoming more comfortable with eating the way I want to eat because I think that's what it means to stay in alignment with yourself and to keep the principles and standards you have with yourself high and that you don't negotiate that. So I'm just gonna enjoy my time out in the sun while I can. Yum. Apparently, the egg membrane has a lot of nutrients. The only issue, it's really hard to remove seamlessly. This is definitely a test of patience and gentleness with my fingers. The egg membrane is this inner white part. Okay, so this part. Hmm. Very nice. <laughs> Lately, I'm trying to minimize the amount of damage I do to my hair. 
back in the day when I was in high school, I would either curl or straighten my hair every single day, like every single day. So much damage, so much heat, and I'm trying to take much better care of my hair. And one of my favorite hair techniques is these sock curls. So these are long socks. I have six in my hair right now, as you can see, and honestly, looking quite nice. So I'm gonna remove these socks and show you what they look like. I'm gonna start with the back first. I took one of the curl out, as you can see, it is curly. I'm gonna have to run my fingers through, but that is one sock. I used six long socks for my hair. Always make sure to damp your hair slightly so that it holds more. Hair is curled, but honestly, I like the loose curl effect more. So I wanna show you the different combs that I use. So the combs that I use, I always use wooden combs. So I have the smaller one and I have the bigger one. I mainly use this one. However, I'm trying to get out like tiny little knots, then I use the small comb. But typically, I like to use the big comb. I do find that it's even better if you just use your fingers because with your fingers, you can really feel the knots in your hair and like work through them. It allows you to be more gentle with it too so that you're not unnecessarily pulling out hair by accident or causing any strain or stress to your hair. So I would always recommend using your fingers first and, for and foremost. And then I would result to using a wide tooth wooden comb and then resort to a smaller tooth comb. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep running my fingers through my hair. Very gently. Notice how slow I'm going because I really wanna feel each individual tiny knot in there or iron out the texture very slowly. <laughs> I'm really happy with how my hair turned out and if you want I can do a tutorial on how I did the salt curls. This is my favorite hairstyle to do that I don't have to use heat, don't have to damage my hair. But yeah, I'm going to go do my makeup now. Okay, so I just finished doing my makeup. I also put these little earrings in. Actually, I put these two. These don't really go together, but I don't know. I think they look kind of nice. Yes, this is a lot of makeup, but they required that we absolutely glam up to the max for this photo shoot. And so right after the photo shoot, I'm gonna take it off and it's gonna be like the best feeling ever. This is the makeup and the hair, heatless salt curls. So success. I'm going to drive over to the photo shoot location.